Okay, this video is going to show how you can extract Spire data into and bring it into Excel using the Spire API. So under Tools, first of all, inside of Spire, you're going to go to your server admin. This is going to get you the correct URL to where your server exists using your certificate, and it uses a name, a random name that's, that was assigned to your server that got added there. So, But instead of going to the app and companies, you're going to go to the API, too many slashes, API V2 companies, and then your company name will go in there. And that's taken right from here, what your database is called right there. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and hit enter on it, and you're going to be shown all of what are called the endpoints inside of the API. So from here, you'll see these are all the endpoints that are available. If you look at sales, for instance, and go into it, you'll see you've got sales orders, sales items, which is the details, uh, batches, invoices, which is sales history, and sales history items, so it's invoice items. So let's look at sales orders. So now you'll see that that URL got put at the top here. So this is the URL to get at your sales orders with uh, by, by copying this. So we'll just push this off side now, and we'll open up Excel. Then with that URL, we just go in here, go in under data, get data from other sources, uh, from web, key in our URL that we took from the spot here. So that's the API with the sales orders. Click OK. Go to basic. This is your, your Spire username and password. Remember, it's a Spire username and password. Okay, so at this point, actually, if we go up here. You could have put it in the URL ahead of time, but you, if you want, what you'll see is that the limit is 10. So we're going to show 10 records. So we want to, at the end of this, put question mark limit equals zero. So that just returns everything. Okay, so now our limit set at zero down here. Okay, then we click on this. list right here sorry and then we want to go to table and we don't need the uh, any extra information here so we just click OK and then this this command here you see that's kind of less symbol of splitting the table so um, here we can now select which item is going to go on this so I'll just uncheck everything and we'll just add order number customer number or customer, sorry, uh, the order date. Um, we'll put the customer PO on. We'll grab FOB. Maybe we'll grab subtotal and total. And what else? Let's go to, um, actually, we'll grab address too because I want to show you what happens there. So that's good for now. Click OK. So now you'll see that that data got pulled on to the sheet here or into the query editor. So now you see that, uh, first of all, that customer, it just says record underneath there, but it also has this little symbol on it that you can split it. So now we can come in here and decide whether what we want. So the customer name, that's probably all we need, but we'll put the customer number on as well. Click OK. And now you see we have customer number and name. This is a a date field, so we want to just tell it it's a date. This one is a alphanumeric is fine. Uh, FOB is fine. This one's numeric, so we'll call it a decimal. Numeric. This one again is another one of the ones that says record, so we can split it up. In this case, we'll take address one, city, province, postal code, and country. Click OK. And it puts out their address information. Okay, so now we simply have to just hit close and load and that data will now end up on a spreadsheet. So all you need to do now is if you've added new sales orders, you just have to refresh it and it'll grab all the new orders. Um, so this is the orders header table. You may also want to include the order details table. So let's do that. Let's just go to another sheet here. And we're going to go 
data, get data, other sources from web. And then this time, let's just bring this over. And we're going to go back and we're going to grab items, order items this time. So grab that again, copy it. Actually, you could put the uh, question mark limit equals zero on here right away too, if you wish. Copy this, take that aside, put the URL in, click OK. No credentials needed this time because we've already put the credentials in. Okay, so same thing here. We click on list. We click on to table. No extra information needed here. We split these columns and we decide we want order number, uh, warehouse part number, description, maybe the order quantity, committed quantity, back order sure, retail price, unit price, uh, Levy. That's just uh, see what else we need here. That's probably about it. And click OK. So now again we decide what uh, which of these fields are numerics. We can just set them again. No dates this time. Okay, then we just simply uh, load and close. So now we've got those on the sheet. So now we have our, actually it's just named itself limit equals zero. But that's okay, we'll call those details down here. Doesn't matter. Query one, we can call this sales header. Okay. So now we have these two queries over here. We can name those what we, we want as well. Rename. So this one was sales header. And this one, sales detail. Okay. So now what we want to do is join these because we want to report on them together. So we simply right click on the uh, the header one and click merge and then so it's got sales header for the first table the second one we use sales detail and we click we want to merge or connect by order number yeah we don't have to do any of the extra privacy stuff there okay so we got order number order number are linked we click ok and continue oops Got to do the privacy, so ignore privacy. Okay, so now we have all the data together. Um, so again, you're going to want to set the uh, date fields and any numeric fields. No, picked up, picked them up numerics from from the other table, so that's okay. This one here has a sales detail, so we split it and we can decide what we want. So we want, may as well throw the order number on there, warehouse, part number, description, quantity, committed, back ordered, retail, unit, and vendor. So those are those ones we had on there. Click OK. And now they're split onto the table. And let's just double check the numerics. They're already set. Yes. OK. So then you just get load and close. And now you've got a third table, it's called Merge 1, and you can name that whatever you want as well. So again, all I need to do now, if I just save and, you know, file and save this spreadsheet, every time I open it up and I hit refresh, it grabs all the newest details out of it. So then, of course, you know, if you're on a, the, let's go to the details section here, and we want to, actually, let's go from this one here. Actually, let's go details. 
we can add some great stuff to it by going insert pivot table it's grabbed all the data we click OK so now we can say we want uh, unit price down here so let's put it well it's probably not a good idea to put that first let's put uh, part number and we're gonna put um, unit price down here and now we've got a got it all set up for part number uh, we can throw order number on here if we wanted to uh, and again you can just save all kinds of tabs on here with different information that's pulling from from the spreadsheets and then every time you open this spreadsheet back up again um, all this data becomes is brand new when you hit the refresh let's grab one more example here just to give some better idea of what you can do with with uh, pivot tables so we're going to go to another tab here and we will grab sales history so data get data other sources from web and then from here we'll choose invoice items which is sales history items and we go limit equals zero which is unlimited and grab that and we'll put her in here this one take a little bit longer to load initially because it's got more data oh, it wasn't too bad okay click on list to table okay and open up this so we'll take invoice number warehouse part number item description invoice date quantity well, actually we'll just take committed unit price extended price as we grab the uh, average cost invoice that should do it okay and we'll just set a few fields up here so this one's a date it's number decimal and this one's invoice so this is where we're gonna get we'll get the uh actually we'll take the salesperson name the customer uh, shipping address and then from there because we took customer we get to delve into some of our customer information we'll just take the name and then from the shipping address in case we want to report on that we'll take a few things out of here too and click OK all right and we'll load and close so now our data is on sheet so now let's say we want to uh, let's just call this sales history so I want to report on this so we're going to go insert back to here first insert pivot table and it selected all of our data you can see the little line that's around the data it's default by default it picks the whole sheet click OK so now what we can do here is take things like um, part number put it on here and go extended price and you can see that how much we sold of each of those part numbers okay and then we can do further information and say right click on the invoice date here and go add as a slicer actually we'll Actually, we'll instead of a slicer, let's just delete the slicer. Let's go invoice date and as a timeline. So here we can now select periods and months, months and years and such for the data. So we just select out a certain date range. So it gets it calculates it and shows our totals at the bottom. And we can just choose a couple of months there. It shows us the data as well. Okay, 
and we go back to the sheet and we add in our customer name put it right above the part number so now we've got each of our customers and how much they bought in that date range that we selected over here and what products they purchased if we switch those two around we now see by part number who bought those items okay so very powerful you can add all kinds of criteria on this and different filters and such so uh, again once i've saved this spreadsheet because all that criteria has been put in there for the spire api connection when we open up the spreadsheet again next month and refresh it it looks into our spire grabs the new data and refreshes a spreadsheet so basically once you've developed these reports you know i just saw it's a bit of work to set up to start with you know just getting the columns all correct and linking done but once that's done you don't have to do it again unless you want to add more criteria to your spreadsheets so anyway that's it